Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Blakey and I am a flutist with Detroit Chamberwinds and Strings and the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. But I wanted to do a little demo and petting zoo for Detroit Chamberwinds and Strings for all of the kids out there during this quarantine. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of info on the flute and I'm gonna start with the C flute. This is the flute that we play probably 99% of the time and it is in fact made of various metals. It used to be made of wood, and then in the late 1800s, a man named Theobald Baum reinvented, re-engineered the flute, and to this day, we use the same engineering with a few minor exceptions, a few extra keys here and there, but pretty much the same, and now we pretty much primarily use metal flutes. Now, sometimes people will have a wooden head joint. You can see here that I have a gold head joint, two different types of gold, yellow, and rose gold, and the body of my flute is made of solid silver. Now, when you're just starting out to play the flute, you'll probably end up with a machine manufactured flute that is made of nickel because it's a lot less expensive than a handmade silver and gold flute. Now, why the silver and gold? I like the gold for warmth in the sound, it adds depth and richness, and I like silver because it adds a little brightness and sparkle. Now if I just have solid silver, it's a little bit maybe too bright all the way around, and if I just have gold, for me at least, it's a little too dark when I play with other instruments. So I like having a nice combination of the two different metals. This is entirely handmade. So I'm going to do a little demo from Bizet's Carmen. So that's a really lovely famous solo um, where the flute gets to play with the harp. It's a very exposed solo. It's found on a lot of orchestral auditions actually. And later on the clarinet comes in and joins. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the piccolo. My piccolo here is also two-toned, two different colors, two different types of wood with silver keys on top and on the tenons here at the very ends. So I have a rosewood and a grenadilla wood. And again, it's just about finding what you like in the instrument. But for the most part, most professional piccolos are in fact made of wood in the body. And this adds a lot of warmth to the sound because the piccolo can be quite shrill when it's all metal. Um, but when you're just starting out, again, the materials are a little bit different. You'll get a resin and plastic combination with some nickel. Um, but this again is a very nice, beautiful, beautiful designed piccolo. So, the piccolo actually sounds an octave higher than the flute. I read the same notes, the same staff, same clef, same fingerings, except for a few exceptions, very minor exceptions, but we can play a little bit low and then a little high, very high. <laughs> That's just a little excerpt from Ravel's Mother Goose Suite, and it has a little lovely piccolo solo in it. That features a little bit more of the low register. I want to spare you the high register. I think you've all heard Stars and Stripes forever. Okay, and lastly, we're going to talk about the alto flute. Now, my alto flute has a curved head joint here. You can play it with a straight head joint. I have one actually, but for my small body, <laughs> it's a little bit long and huge. So I opt usually for this curved head joint. It's a little more comfortable for my shoulders and my arms. And now this is um, lower than the flute, the C flute. This is a G flute, it's, it's in a different key, and um, but the same fingerings. So it has a nice warm sound. It almost sounds like a reed flute or a pan pipe. It has a hauntingly beautiful tone, um, a different color for sure. And composers like Ravel and Stravinsky really utilize this beautiful color 
in pieces like Daphnis and Chloe and the Rite of Spring. So speaking of which, I'm going to play a little bit of a alto flute solo from the Rite of Spring. <laughs> So those are the three main flutes that appear in our general chamber music and orchestral literature. There is a bass flute, which is even larger than this. And um, of course there are recorders and pan pipes and all sorts of little fun whistles and things like that. We don't really use those in our general repertoire, however. Um, so I just wanted to cover these three. And um, as always, if you have any questions, just write some comments back to me. But I hope you enjoyed this little demo on all the flutes and stay safe out there and enjoy.